Hello again, grade 12 students. How are you? I hope you are fine and doing good. I'm Mom Rosalind De La Serna at your service to give you another lecture about Practical Research 2. Our lesson today will involve variables. So, what are expected of you after this module? You are to define variables in the context of research and differentiate the kinds of variables and their uses. Before we begin the discussion of this new topic, let me give you a short recap. Last meeting, we had the importance of quantitative research to four major and significant disciplines. These are education, accounting, business, and management, or ABM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, and we also have the humanities and social sciences, or HUMES. One of the aspects of research is to describe and explain variables. A variable is a central concept in research. It is a measurable characteristic that changes in value. It may vary from one group to another group, one person to another, or even with the same person over time. A variable is anything that may assume varied numerical or categorical values. For instance, sex is a variable. It may be male or female. But it won't be applicable as a variable if the setting of the research is an exclusive school for the girls. Socioeconomic status is a variable. It may range from zero to billion pesos. Educational attainment of parents is another variable. It may be from did not attend school to postdoctorate degree. Let's keep the ball rolling. Let's have the types of variables. A variable that can take infinite number on the value that can occur within a population is known as continuous variable. Its values can be divided into fractions, while discrete variable are also known as categorical or classificatory variable, on the other hand, is any variable that has a limited number of distinct values and which cannot be divided into fractions. Examples of continuous variables are age, height, and temperature, while that of discrete variable the examples are sex, blood group, and number of children in the family. Simply, your age can be 17.5 years old, so it is a continuous variable. But your parents cannot have 4.5 children, so it is a discrete variable. Continuous variables can be further categorized as either interval or ratio variables. Interval variable is a measurement where the difference between two values thus have meaning. The difference between a temperature of 60 degrees and 50 degrees is the same difference as between 30 degrees and 20 degrees. The interval between values makes sense and can be interpreted. While the ratio variable possesses the properties of interval variable and has a clear definition of zero, indication that there is none of that variable. Examples of ratio variable include height, weight, and distance but temperature measured in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit is not a ratio variable because zero under this temperature scales does not mean no temperature at all. Discrete variables can be further categorized as nominal and ordinal. 
Nominal variable is a variable with no quantitative value. It has two or more categories, but does not imply ordering of cases. Common examples of this variable include eye color, business type, and religion. A subtype of nominal scale with only two categories, just like sex, male or female, is known as dichotomous. Ordinal variable is a variable that has two or more categories which can be ranked. If you ask people if they like listening to music while studying, and they could answer either not very much, much, or very much, then you have an ordinal variable. While we can rank them, we cannot place a value to them. In this type, distances between attributes do not have any meaning. For example, you use educational attainment as a variable on a survey. You might code elementary school graduate is to 1, high school graduate 2, college undergraduate 3, and college graduate 4. In this measure, higher number means greater education. Even though we can rank this from lowest to highest, the spacing between the values may not be the same across the levels of the variables. The distance between 3 and 4 is not the same with the distance between 1 and 2. In a typical study, the researcher starts with an effect and investigates on its possible causes. The cost variable or the one responsible for the conditions that act on something else to bring about changes is the independent variable. Dependent variable, also called outcome variable, is the result or effect of the changes brought about by another variable, usually independent variable. Let's have this scenario. In a certain study, a group of students was subjected to aromatherapy using essential oils while reading and another group read under normal conditions. Then after a month, both groups took a reading comprehension test. In this case, the reading comprehension test score is the dependent variable and exposure to aromatherapy is the independent variable. This is because the test score is dependent on whether or not the student was exposed to aromatherapy. The independent variable, exposure to aromatherapy, is independent because it is something that brought about the change. That ends our lesson today. Congratulations and thank you so much for listening. See you again next meeting. You may now accomplish the activities intended for this lesson. Please do not go any further. Just focus on the lesson, okay? Lesson today, that is variables. Good luck and may God bless us all.